Okay, so let's look at the next uh, assignment here. This one you need to explain how to show which of these two numbers is greater in the following of three ways. So kind of like using the less than greater than symbol. Which one would the, remember the alligator, right? Which one would the alligator eat? Here we want to use a strip diagram, okay? And again, that's what we've been doing is using 10 centimeters as our one and then centimeters as our tenth, and then millimeters as our hundredth, and then just trying to do tiny, tiny, tiny things for the rest. Then you're going to do a draw number line, and these can both be on the same number line. For paper strips, you're gonna need two different paper strips, and you need to line them up because if, you know, if I have a paper strip drawing over here and then a paper strip drawing over here, right, like that doesn't, how does that help you? So with a linear model, you need to line them up to do that. So make sure you have two drawings, one of each number, and they line up appropriately. On a number line, you can just draw one number line and plot both numbers on there. All right, and again, they might not necessarily be on tick marks, but make sure your number line is to scale or accurate, but they might not be on tick marks. That might not be possible. Uh, let's see, the next one would be like using base 10 blocks and make sure you define your whole, like what is your one? So if, or what is your, you know, single, like whatever you want to do. So sometimes people define the single and say, well, it's worth, a hundredth or a thousandth, or they describe what one is and work their way down. That's up to you. All right, and again, there you would need both drawings because you'd have a base 10 picture for this and a base 10 picture for this, and then you'd explain, again, how that tells you that one is bigger than the other, okay? All right, so hopefully you've done that. I'm gonna look at, so hopefully you've also tried six and seven. We're gonna go over these together. And Mark says 0.178 is greater than 0.25. So he says 178 thousandths is greater than 25 hundredths. Okay, and why might Mark think this? Explain in two different ways and um, why Mark's statement is not correct. Okay, so let's look at what Mark's doing here. All right, so we have what? 0.178 and we have 0 0.25, okay? And he thinks incorrectly, right, that this one is greater. In fact, this one is greater, All right? And so he might think that because whole number knowledge is interfering here. So he's viewing this as 178, and he's viewing this as 25, just without totally ignoring the decimals. And so then it's like, okay, well, you know, 178 is greater than 25. So that could be one possible reason why he thinks that is greater. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna explain in three ways how we can help him um, understand why it's not correct here. So we're gonna go ahead and do a linear model first. So I am going to have 10 centimeters be my paper strip for one, just because those really long ones in that handout are impossible to put on a screen. So this is my one, which I don't really need a one, do I? So um, I am going to let this be actually my tenth instead. So I'm gonna, I can see already, I'm gonna need more paper. So we're gonna have to go sideways. So I'm gonna let this be my tenth, which means one of these guys, would be my hundredth, and that's kind of handy because now my millimeter, if I could just draw a millimeter, is going to be my thousandth. So that works out well. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn this paper sideways. So point, what do we have? Was it 0.178, is that right? And 0.25. So if we have paper strips, what I could do is I could go ahead and this is gonna be one. So I'm gonna start here. And this is going to be one tenth, which means this would be seven hundredths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. And again, kids would already have these pre-cut out, like they wouldn't be using a ruler. We're just using a ruler because we're all virtual here. All right, so these are each worth 0 .01, 0 0.01, so hundredth for each of them. Okay, oopsie. 0 .01, 0 .01, 0 .01. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I have seven hundredths. And then eight thousandths, which I can actually do that because of my millimeters. So eight of them would go here, and that would be what? Seven cuts, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven would be pretty good. And I'm just gonna, oh, was there eight? Yeah, seven cuts made eight things, so that's good. Okay, so that's those guys. This guy, I'm gonna line it up right with it because it's a linear model, so we need to line them up. Now this guy is, and again, if your point 0.1 doesn't line up, that's a problem. So there's point 0.1. And then notice your point 0.2 should be longer than all of this, right? Uh, so because this isn't enough to regroup into point 0.2. So right away, when we put that next paper strip next to it, that kid is going to be like, oh, like this, I can just pay attention to that first place value because 2 tenths is longer than 1 tenth with some little extra stuff. And then the five would be here. So one, two, three, four, five. That needs to be fixed a little bit. Okay, and these are my, what, hundredths again? So the nice thing about paper strips is it's very visual, the place values, so the student can see where the ones end, and then they can see that this two is longer than all this extra stuff because in base 10 all this extra stuff would have to get to basically a hundred to regroup and so they can play pay attention and realize that only that first place value matters because if this guy's longer it doesn't matter the little stuff because it's not enough to make it equal point two and again this needs to be to scale so sometimes people randomly draw you need to make sure this is to scale drawing there. And I couldn't quite fit that all on there. I don't know if I can, can I make my screen bigger at this point? Nope, so, all right, well, I could do it diagonally. There you go, I can fit it all in. But, all right, if we were using the really big paper strips, we would be in trouble. Um, a second method we could use is we could use base 10 blocks, all right? So I'm gonna let the little tiny guy be my thousandth. So this guy is going to have eight. And then uh, tiny cubes and then seven longs. And then one flat. All right. And this one is going to have two flats. And five longs. Because in this picture, if these guys are thousands, my longs would be worth a hundredth, and my flats would be worth a tenth. This is kind of our legend here as far as values go. And so with kids, you could be like, well, in base 10, if you hit 10, you regroup. I didn't have enough to regroup these. I didn't have enough to regroup these. So over here, I did have enough other stuff to regroup in a sense. And so having two flats, is more than this one because if these guys would were able to regroup they would and you didn't regroup them which means they can't be regrouped so then that is definitely larger because you have more of the larger shape okay and then our other method is a number line so i'm just going to use my ruler to help me have a straight line all right and so i'm going to have let's see i will put point one here and then we'll put maybe 0.2 here and, oopsie, sorry, I didn't mean a dot. And we'll do like 0.3 over here. And I kind of want to make it somewhat to scale. So those are about five apart. So those should be about five. So I eyeballed it okay. All right, and it takes nine cuts. So I'm going to kind of cut it in half. There's one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Kind of cut it in half. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Three, four. So it takes nine cuts to make 10 segments. All right, so uh, 0.25, so here's 0 0.21, 0 0.22, 0 0.23, 0 0.24, 0 0.25 would be here. If my big ticks are tenths, my little ticks have to be hundredths, 
and same thing over here, and I have 0.178, so 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0.17, oh boy lord, ah, uh, sorry, say one thing, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.19, and so 0 0.17, would be here and then we're a little bit past it we're past half we're almost we're at a eight so we're almost to point eight and so what I can show a kid here is that numbers that are to the right are larger so this number is to the right so 25 hundredths is to the right of 178 thousands and so it is bigger because the definition on our number line is numbers go to the right they get bigger numbers that go to the left get smaller. So since this is to the right, it's bigger. Here it has been regrouped into bigger shapes. Like if you could regroup these, you would, but you can't. So here you have more of the bigger grouping. So you know this is bigger. And then in a linear model, this one's longer. And so you know it's larger because it's longer than the other one. All right. Okay, so question number seven asks about finding a number in between here. And so if I want to find a number in between here, I can cut and find one because there's always infinite many numbers in between other numbers. So if these are my end tick marks, they both have to end at the same place values. So that means this is tenths, hundreds, thousands. I'm going to put a zero here because both of these need to be in thousands so that my little ticks can be in the ten thousands. So I'm going to do nine little tick marks. I'm going to do my one in the middle. So there's one and then four. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Okay. And again, uh, if it doesn't look quite right, you might have to, you know, finagle a little bit or erase it or redo. All right. So then I know that this would be 3.2401 because remember, if these are thousands, then the little units are ten thousands. So 3.2402, 3.2403, 3 3.2404, 3.2405, 3 and I could keep going. But any of these would be between these, and I could cut more and more and more, but so I might as well just pick, I'm going to pick something halfway in the middle. So I know that 3.2405 or 3 and 2,405 ten thousands is between here, but I could keep going. So I could do 3.2406, 3.2407, 3.2408, and then when I hit 10, I would regroup and that would be 3.241. So I could pick any of these points in between here, but I could also pick others. So I could pick 3.2402 right here and then say, well, maybe it's not on a tick mark. I'm just going to pick something in here like a nine. And so that point would be past two and almost to the next guy, but not. It's not on a tick mark, but it's definitely in between here. So as long as you have 3.24 and then some more decimal places with digits in it, then you're fine because you are less than 3.241. There's always infinite many points because remember we can zoom in, zoom in, and zoom in. So if I want to put 000782, I'm totally fine because I'd be at 3.24 and then a zero, and then I'm not even close to this. Like this would be almost on top of that and I would be fine. So again, infinite many points between any two points I just picked the halfway one because it was easy and I just went ahead and did my thousandths as my tick mark because this guy had a thousandth. So to make it match, I had this one have a thousandth and then I cut into ten thousandths for my little ticks and picked one of those. But you could have picked anything as long as it's 3.24 and then a, you know, a zero, so not any number there, sorry, has to be a zero here because obviously it has to be smaller than one. And then whatever happens behind that, you're fine. You would be totally fine. All right. I hope that helps. Have a great day. Bye-bye.